Our universe has four dimensions, up and down, left and right, forward and back, and time. These four dimensions can mix and blend together depending on the observer, but there are always four, never more, never less. Or are there? There are many theories today which attempt to merge quantum mechanics with general relativity which require more than the four dimensions we know. Examples of such theories are bosonic string theory, which requires 26 dimensions, super string theory, which requires 10 dimensions, and M theory, which requires 11. But if we only measure the four dimensions that we know and love, how could these theories ever even hope to be consistent with our reality if such a fundamental aspect seems to be wrong? Well, it turns out that this doesn't have to be wrong as long as we just haven't seen the extra dimensions yet. Now, I know this seems like a total cop-out, but it isn't as bad as it sounds. It's actually pretty straightforward to show that it would be very difficult, but not impossible, to measure extraspatial dimensions as long as they satisfy two conditions. They are finite in size, or compact, and they are very small. The simplest example of such a compact dimension to consider is just a circle. So to see how this works, let's think of a bead on a circular loop, but not just any bead. A quantum bead, meaning the way it evolves with time is described by the Schrodinger equation from quantum mechanics. So we know that the state of this bead can be thought of as a wave where each point on the wave is related to the probability of finding the bead at that point. This wave must abide by a few rules for it to make sense in the case of it living on a circle. First, it doesn't make sense for the same point to have two different probabilities, so the wave can't take two different values at the same point. Second, we want the probability distribution to be continuous, so it can't be cut, which means that it has to end where it started. Third, we can't have any kinks or sharp points on it. So in the end, we're left with a set of waves which describe our system where the only real difference between them is how many peaks they have. Here, the black circles represent the loop and the red waves correspond to the individual states of the bead. The particle is more likely to be found on the loop where the red line is outside of the circle and it is less likely to be found where the red line is inside the circle. Each one of these waves describes a different energy state for the bead. The more peaks, the higher the energy. This energy can be found by just solving the Schrodinger equation, and is given by this expression here, where n is the number of peaks, h bar is Planck's constant, m is the mass of the bead, and r is the radius of the loop. Now, let's compare the two lowest energy states, E1 and E2. Their difference is given by 3 h bar squared over 2 m r squared. So, if r is small enough, the amount of energy the bead would need to access the next to lowest energy level would be huge. If this loop is actually an extraspatial dimension, and the bead is any particle, we see exactly how extra dimensions could hide from detection. To actually change a particle's state in this extra dimension, it would need a tremendous amount of energy. If the state of the particle never changes in the extra dimensions, the physics is the same as if the dimension doesn't exist. Now, the theories which incorporate extra dimensions typically involve unifying quantum mechanics with gravity, so it's reasonable to assume that r is the order of a Planck length, the length scale which is typically associated with this type of unification. This means that if we wanted to probe these extra dimensions with, say, a proton, this proton would need a momentum of about 10 to the 19 giga electron volts. Let's put this into perspective. The Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, at CERN is the largest particle accelerator on Earth. In non-particle physics terms, this machine is able to accelerate protons to just about 7 miles per hour short of the speed of light. If these Planck scale extra dimensions exist, we would need an accelerator that would fire protons at about an inch per week less than the speed of light to see them. In other words, if this accelerator shot a proton parallel to a beam of light, after an entire week the light would be just over an inch ahead of the proton. The difference between 7 miles per hour and 1 inch per week may not seem huge, but when things get this close to the speed of light, their energies become massive. The LHC produces protons, each with about one microjoule of energy. 
This is comparable to the kinetic energy of a flying mosquito. This seems small, but keep in mind that this is the energy of a single tiny proton. The LHC produces packets of proton about every 25 nanoseconds, with each packet consisting of about 100 billion protons. That's a lot of energy. However, that's nothing compared to what would be necessary for our fictitious collider. To be able to see the Planck scale, the individual protons would need at least an energy of about 2 gigajoules, which is approximately the same amount of kinetic energy as a Boeing 737 at cruising speed of 550 miles per hour. All of this energy has to be tied up into a single proton, and presumably we would need billions of these protons to even hope of getting a usable measurement of the extra dimensions. So we are a very, very far way away from being able to glimpse extra dimensions as small as the Planck length. Now, there's nothing saying that these extra dimensions have to be as small as the Planck length. In fact, there are many good reasons to think that the extra dimensions might be quite a bit larger. For example, some instances of string theory suggest that the particles of the standard model, the ones that we look at in colliders and other particle physics experiments, are actually truly confined to four spacetime dimensions. Gravity, however, is not restricted in this way, meaning that it's allowed to travel through the extra dimensions. This could even be used to explain why gravity is so weak compared to the other forces. But since gravity is so weak, its effects are incredibly hard to detect in many experiments to begin with, meaning these extra dimensions could be relatively large. Theoretical predictions show that these dimensions could even be as large as half a millimeter, though experiments have shown that they would need to be smaller than a few microns to be compatible with measurements. The idea of extra dimensions may seem like science fiction, but the possibility that they do exist is very real. If they are found, their discovery will have huge implications for physics, such as directing us towards a theory of quantum gravity, or even possibly explaining dark matter. However, detecting extra dimensions is tricky business, especially since we don't know how many to expect, or how large they would be. So, until we measure more, we will have to be content with the four dimensions we know of now.